Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. I'm DK. My co-host is Bricky. He's going to be teaching us all about the most ridiculous things in Warhammer 40k. But before he does, if you enjoyed today's episode, head on over to patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous and consider supporting the podcast. You get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen, some real nice... HD posters, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, patreon.com slash ridiculous if you enjoyed today's episode. And Bricky's going to tell you where you can find some real smooth quality merch and about the book club. Ooh, not only is the merch quality, but it's smooth. Actually, it is pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. smooth. It's comfy. It's comfy I, 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 I spend I spend the big, big bucks for the good merch because it's about the merch, DK. I'm going to say this every fucking episode. <laughs> it's about the merch, DK. Check out the merch <laughs> in the description or at Orchidate.com. You can get shirts, hoodies, black, white, legally distinct Mechanicus shirt, and legally distinct Orc shirt. Off of our mm-hmm. I'm a tank, I'm a tank, I'm a tank episode. Also, Doge Van Dyer stickers. And good news, I will have dice restocked before Christmas. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's Let's go. go. It'll be a little different when it arrives because it's a different company, but I'll tell you about it more when we get there. I still think they are very solid and worth the money. Everything's worth the money because it's about the money, DK. Also, it um, was about the money, Spider Man. Actually, it's kind of about the money. Oh, yeah, it's always about the money. You're right. It's always about the money. Anywho, um, also, Book Club, Brutal Cunning, the the episode will be out at the end of this week. So finish it up, and we're going to be talking about it. It's pretty good. I didn't realize that we were having a Disney princess uh, book club for our book club. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Princess is like the... um... Oh shit! It's like it's a, he's like the hound of brutal con. Well, he's not quite as lovable as hound, but same idea. Lovable little sidekick. Yeah. Lovable little sidekick. It's great. Yeah. Anywho, it's great. Anywho, um, DK. Hey. Uh, I will. Uh, people seem to like the the quotes before. <sighs> oh shit! The one so, where it was a sister, and I thought it was Tyranid because I heard Hive, and I fixated on that. And you yeah. will never, uh, ever, uh, ever live that down. <sighs> it's fine. I've done All dumber right. things, and I probably will do dumber things. Go ahead. <clears throat> Let me tell you of my future. My hand will reach into the stars, reshaping the galaxy into a place of order and unity. Under my reign, the kingdoms of old shall live again, reborn to an age of power and glory, the like of which you can only imagine. I will rule every planet touched by the light of this star, and even in the darkness beyond, my name will be whispered with fear and respect. Oh boy, this sounds like a bad... This sounds like a tyrant. This sounds like some kind of a ruling tyrant. So... (coughs) First thing that comes to mind is either uh, either a Primarch or a Necron, like one of these one of these hoity-toity Necrons that wants to just like rule over everything. Mm. Ooh, you uh, you are correct on one of them. Oh, you know, since it's you, I'm gonna say it's 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 a named Necron character that comes out of like the the big sleep and is looking is looking to conquer. I am fucking floored that you got that 100% correct. Let's go! (laughs) Absolutely. Now, Ken, do you think you can name this character? Um... I don't know that many Necrons. I mean, we've talked about a couple. Maybe the... I'm going to go out it maybe the Storm Lord. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's I, have, I have made amends go. for the Tyranid mistake. Let's go. I am so proud of you. Imitate yes! the Storm Lord Pharaon of the Sautech dynasty. <laughs> let's go, dude. Let's I am go. Very Starting nice. Starting off with a bang. Very nice. So uh, me and Sha were discussing this a bit. You know, naturally, we got those big episodes, the Primarch and the Space Marine Legions or a faction overview, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. However, you know, we in the beginning, we did those pretty often. I kind of want to slow those down, save those for the really good days. 
Um, okay. And then, you know, like, like for example, uh, you know, it's also behoove of me. It's the moment we get the new Dyson to probably do a big topic. So Did you say it behooves you. <laughs> behoo behoove of me. <laughs> okay. Is that it, is that it incorrect? It behooves that, you. It it no, it's behoove of me. Sure, sure. It, it's a, it's a good thing. It's 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 better for us. It's advantageous for us to have do to, it that way. I don't have to be right. I just have to pretend like I'm right. <laughs> uh, but 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 yes, it is, and it also is good for us because it lets us have a little bit of in betweens, nice little mm -hmm. character stuff here and there, and then big episode, and then a little bit of in between. Because if we do like all the Marine Legions immediately. Well, then we're just left with. Oh side yeah, stuff. The, that's yeah. Then you got to scrape the bottom of the barrel for like these weird little side characters nobody's ever heard of, and it, it gets weird. Sure, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, but as a as a Necron boy myself, as a big Necron <laughs> fan, I wanted to do the Storm Lord. So here we are talking about the Storm Lord. It, it isn't there isn't too well. There's a there's a bit of lore, but there isn't uh, like an insane amount. And that's honestly fine by me because it actually has a, a decent, there's a decent like understanding of the character, which I think okay. is uh, is very nice. Uh, cool, I like it. So, Imatech the Storm Lord, <clears throat> he is the Pharon, and I'm sure you remember the Pharon is the overarching leader of a certain dynasty, the the top dog, number one. Uh, like the, the pharaoh, like instead the of pharaoh. a pharaoh, it's a pharaoh to be legally dis anyway. Imhotep, <laughs> not Imhotep. Yeah, if know? we're gonna steal it, we can't make it obvious. Jesus, of course not. Put in, put the, put an N at the end. It's not pharaoh. It's fair on. Put a Duh. KH at the end of every single <laughs> <Yeah>. Necron name. <laughs> he's not Emotep, he's Emotech. He's Zantrek. <laughs> yeah, from from the South Tech. <laughs> Hello, it's very oh. different. <laughs> so the he is the Pharaon of the South Tech dynasty and is most likely the strongest and most accomplished Necron overlord in the galaxy. Um oh. I think including the Silent King. I was about to ask, like, where does he rank with the Silent King then? Because that I always understood that the Silent King was like the one with the Necrons. So the Silent King is, and naturally the Silent King, both in terms of power and as a model, would probably kick him like Imhotep's ass because he's got a gigantic floating dais with all these giant laser beams, and he's bigger and, and he's got the best yeah. material, you know. But in terms of actual army mustering, uh, Imhotep actually hasn't beat because the Silent King's return was rather recent, and most Necrons oh. see his return and they're like, "Oh yes, the king is." Our leader is our, our glorious leader is back, and they bow to him. But Imatech went and said, "Fuck off." <laughs> okay, okay. It's, Great leader of Wigs. Fuck off. All right. It is wonderful because uh, basically <laughs> he I, I forget the exact the exact kind of quote or something, but they're both kind of douchebags to each other. However, he basically. The, the short of it basically said, hey, Silent King, you're a coward. Uh, you left oh. and cried your little baby tears when the, all of us, you know, slept. You betrayed us and you're a bitch. I ain't I ain't doing shit. It's my turn. Oh, man. That's that's I the, mean, the, that's the short Internet version of what he said. I'm sure. I mean, he from what I remember, he's kind of right. Because well, like he, he kind of yeah. did, but isn't he also keeping watch to make sure like the Tyranids and stuff don't so destroy they all, everything? They all went to bed. The Silent King left, and he stayed in between that that space in between galaxies, and he kind of just sat there in contemplation, like yeah. paying atonement for his sins, because mm -hmm. um, he was had mega depression. And then sure. ch chilling out there, he saw a bunch of bugs start entering the galaxy. He's like, oh, no. And then he ran Time away. to wake up the boys. Yeah, everyone get up, get up, get up. <laughs> because naturally, he wants to make sure everyone has a soul again. He wants oh, to sure. return them to the flesh. Yeah. And you can't do that if there's no flesh left. It's all been eaten. Yeah, that'd be that'd be tough. Wait, so why does the Stormlord hate him so much? It's not like he actually betrayed them. He just, he's he did, been tormenting though. 
He he signed the pact with the Deceiver to turn them all into robots. Oh, I forgot that part. Yeah, oh. now granted, he was, in a sense, deceived, but you... <laughs> Is you know, that what the Deceiver does? No. Road, road to hell, you know, paved. Paved good with good intentions. intentions. Yep, yep, yep. Like, he had, he has one, but he was all, I mean, he was also green. He wanted to kill the old ones because they were cringe. And he's like, yeah, I'll use the immortality. Well, no, he wanted immortality for his people, but he also yeah. wanted to kill the old ones because they were cringe. Um, ah, so the Storm Lord's hatred of the of the Silent King makes a lot more sense. Why doesn't everybody hate him then? If he's the one that did it and sort of signed their, sealed their fate as like Necrons, why doesn't everybody hate him? Because he also led the revolt against the Catan and saved them from damnation. Oh, well, boy, I have forgotten a lot of Necron lore. Yeah, well, so, so <laughs> king king main main leader of necrons all with super cancer um you know want to get old ones to give them immortality old ones said no then they try to kill old ones didn't work found the katan and was like hey katan or the katan are like hey i can make you immortal and they're like dope gets made immortal they eat all their souls use them as slaves and then eventually silent king fights back against them and frees them from the bad life and then turns the katana to pokemon Gotcha, gotcha. And they all go to bed. His his throne has one that that powers it, right? Yeah, it's great. I love that. Because when when the Silent King dies, he explodes on a four up, and the rule is called (laughs) Vengeance of the Unchained. It's great. (laughs) It's like a Tom breaking free and being like, oh, I'm so angry. (laughs) I love it. That's great. So, uh, ne- uh, so good old Imatech, he was actually a Nemesaur. You may remember our boy Zandrek. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. He, so Nemesaur is basically like a high general, and he awoke from the great sleep way back when, or um, not necessarily way back when, but he w- w- awoke. And the planet of the South Tech dynasty was known as Mandro- Mandragora, and it had mainly survived it intact. However, it was beginning to fall due to ambition because the ruling pharaoh of the South Tech dynasty had died during hibernation. His uh, wow. his sleep didn't work. So a whole now we know about Necron politics. A whole <laughs> bunch of South Tech nobles were like, "Free seat! I want the throne!" And they all immediately for the next maybe ten years were stuck in this giant civil war on who oh. can regain the throne. And I'm surprised it t- only took ten years. So it would have lasted longer. Because no faction was truly able to gain victory. Uh, but during this time, all the dudes that um, were fighting over the throne decided that high-ranking noble revival, like waking them up, was to be suspended. Because they didn't oh. want any more competition uh, for the throne <laughs> until someone picked it up. <laughs> that makes um, sense. Now, if it had continued, it probably would have just torn the planet apart and they would have all died. However... Oh. Uh, there was one particular guy, we don't really know who he was, but he was one of the people fighting over the throne, and he said, I'm going to reawaken the famous Grand General, Nemesaur Imatech, because if I had him as my support, I would not be able to fail. So oh, okay. Imatech awoke, and he was like, what? No. <laughs> what? What the, are you doing? What the fuck are you all doing? <laughs> Who the fuck are you? And so instead, he he took his he took two robotic middle fingers, stood up and waved them in every direction, mustered his own army and took the throne for himself. Oh, okay. Damn. He he, he killed what? all the other nobles that were trying to get the throne. He cuz he's a Ooh. grand general, killed them sure. all, took an army, took the throne back for himself. And said, fuck all of you. I want this. Damn, how, how long did that take him? Not uh, very long? Not, well, I mean, long in terms of, be, of like, sure, in a sense, it might have taken long, but not, like, super long. Not well, I was just going to say that there's, like, a 10-year civil war, and then within, like, a span of a year, he's the Stormlord just like, yep, got it. It's like That sounds whoa. about right, yeah. <laughs> whoa, okay. Some <laughs> it looks like we got a badass over here. A, a little bit. Hands like a meme, yeah. Good lord. So, when he awoke, uh, or after he was crowned Pharaoh, he immediately forbade or forbode any kind of infighting within the realm. Uh, if oh. you are trying to fight for 
a position of power or killing someone else to try to gain their their seat or something of that nature that will be like immediate death if you try oh. to circumvent the normal like law and order process in any way uh he's gonna go curs on your ass Ooh, um any kind that. of in no any kind of infighting is a waste of time effort and resources naturally uh if not everyone like adhered to this in the beginning yeah uh, and is it, is it i guess that's that's where the law came from that uh um infinite and the divine and why they're not allowed to like kill each other and you're only allowed to forward the necrons and there shouldn't be any infighting and why they were so uppity about that yeah, at least for that major dynasty, because obviously this yeah. is the Sautek dynasty. Um, mm -hmm. a good, our good boy, I think actually, I think Orokin is of the Sautek dynasty as well. Um, yeah. I know Trazen is of the Nahilak uh, dynasty. Because um, you Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in the beginning, of course, this law wasn't really uh, you know taken into account much, but eventually Imatek made quite a few examples of them. And then they started <laughs> yeah. to be like, all right, all right, we won't fight anymore. I'm sorry, Dad. He's serious business. He's not fucking around. Let's not let's not try him. First pick up people, they were like, let's, let's try this fool. And and Storm was like, find out. <laughs> yeah, fuck around to find out, kid. <laughs> um, however, between his like complete like iron fisted rule and his very quick military successes of all the nearby worlds. His position became basically unassailable. And the only real person, the only true person who could actually maybe make a challenge for the throne is Nemesor Zandrek. Um, and, and his good bodyguard, Vargard Oberyn. <laughs> However, that Zandrek's loyalty to the Stormlord is so unquestionable that he's not really of any threat. Okay. Like... <laughs> the, the only person Zandrek really answers to is, is Imatek. Okay. I thought you were going to say it's unquestioned because uh, Zandrek's too busy trying to figure out how to eat cheese or something. Uh, there's also that. Um, I you know, sure I'll, do I'll, love cheese. <laughs> cheese? Ferment, for, this has been fermented for years. Why would I? Why would humans? It's Oh, well. <laughs> now, if anyone should appreciate the importance of being fermented for years, it should be the <laughs> Necrons. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Fair um, enough. Uh, granted, though, I, I know a lot of people tell us about this or make it occasionally. Um, a lot of people think that Zandrek actually is make like fooling, um, where he's oh. not actually. Uh, he's just pretending that he thinks he's human. Yeah, well, well, organic, not human. Um, oh, you're right. Sure. But uh, no, a lot of people think he's pretending. I think they don't quite get that properly. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the original writer of Zandrek had like a, a close friend or a father with dementia. And it oh. was, it's more of like he has moments of clarity. Yeah. Um, and that... when he has the moments of clarity, he kind of does this little wink and he's like, well, why not play the fool and enjoy life, you know, as if I, w I was still alive kind of thing. If, yeah. if I if I did if I was a robot, why wouldn't I just enjoy life? Wink, wink. Yeah. So he's he's kind of like uh, simulating robo dementia, essentially. Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of joking about it a little bit. Gotcha. Or, or, or sorry, he, he's not he's joking about it when he does have his moments of clarity. But I think he legitimately believes he is a robot or uh, he is uh, organic. Yeah. However, yeah, yeah. just. Sometimes he'll have moments of clarity and he just kind of runs with it because he's like, I really like battle. I really like being a general. I have all the things at my disposal. Might as well keep playing it, playing it up. Yeah, you might as well. I mean, if, it, if, it's, I gotta, if it's working for you. I got I to gotta say the Zandra quote because it gets me every time. <laughs> See, Oberyn, the Separatists come, attempting to outflank me just as they did at the battle of uh, the fourth battle of Vindach. How they calculate that daubing themselves green and roaring like savages will produce a different outcome, I cannot fathom. But it is of no account. Ready, my legions. Another glorious victory shall be ours. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have, I have heard you say that quote at least three times, and it gets me every time still. It's just so funny um. to me. Garbing themselves in greens and yelling like a bird. That won't change anything. Silly organics. Doesn't so, know the difference. <laughs> so Imatech, as a uh, he is arguably, 
I, I think I say this a lot because this is the way I am. Um, but as far as like top strategic minds, mm -hmm. it, it would he'd probably be like top five. Oh, okay. in terms of in terms of well, like smart generals, because Necrons are very good generals. That's like they're kind of shtick. Oh, yeah. um, they're insanely good general uh, or uh, like um like leaders and they're they're great tacticians that's the word i'm looking for tacticians yes yeah. well because um, they're walking supercomputers essentially so it's like you know they, sh they should be good at yeah uh, that stuff yeah he's up there i think along with like gilliman and dorn you know oh. like, like like he's <laughs> very very intelligent um every oh. attack he does you have no you have no idea what the hell he's doing. Is this is attack actually his main attack or is it a decoy ram? Is he bleeding your reinforcements or is he sieging something else you don't know about? Is this like he has thousands of contingency plans. Every Damn. possible thing is accounted for and and made a plan for. If you try to do this attack, he has forces ready. If you try to use speed, he has traps laid. If you attempt uh, air, uh orbital fights, he like He's so incredibly good at his tactics. So has, has he ever lost? Because general as he is, you know, he might occasionally go hand uh, go toe to toe with other major people. Uh, and then there's always things that he may not have accounted for, you know, like, like mm. things like knowledge you don't know about until it arrives. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and also, also, you know, like. You gotta, you gotta write a compelling and interesting thing. If you never, that's loses, true. You can't just boring. be perfect. Yeah. Then he's, then he's just a big Mary Sue. Well, um, that actually being said, let's talk about some of his flaws because for okay. all of the amazing things that he is, is good at, with all of his his methodology and all of his his ability to somehow always know so that what you're doing at every step, his insane tactics. He has two particular problems. One, he fucking hates orcs. <laughs> okay so he's like the rest of the galaxy sure he, he has the same problem that Admech does in brutal cunning where no matter how much he tries oh, to plan for the orcs how do you understand logical yeah. how do you understand an army that makes no sense how do you That's fight true. an enemy that has makes no sense you can't uh, fight the illogical with logic he often only has like short lasting victories over green skins because they'll eventually yeah. find some way to get back at him because they just don't make sense. Yeah. The the concept for him, because he obviously has this hatred of the orcs, but that's just that's just orcs in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, now for him, his methodology is that when the galaxy is washed clean of the blood of inferior beings, Necron oh. dominance will begin anew. So he's a little racist. <laughs> Yeah, I would say he's a lot uh, racist. That's that's genocide on a on a historical level. Like he he <laughs> believes that the, everyone is on his lawn. This is like yeah, order, unity, obedience. We taught this galaxy these things long ago, and we will do so again. Mm. He, he is he is full <laughs> on. I mean, this is most Necrons. They think this way. But yeah. he believes that, like, yeah, we owned the galaxy and we had to go to bed. We're back to re-own the galaxy. Do not fuck with us. This is, like, our destiny and our right. Oh, man. <laughs> if if all those Necrons ever wake up, it's going to be a bad time. If the, nec the only thing keeping the Necrons from taking over the galaxy is the issues they're having with sleep, uh, with, like, the long sleep... Yeah. The slowness of their politics and the fact that their numbers aren't high right now because they haven't woken them all up. Speaking of, yeah. he has actually awoken 80 tomb worlds, eight zero Whoa. tomb worlds as of prior to ninth edition. He has now awoken 120 Sautek tomb worlds. That's 120 a lot of tomb worlds. He, How this many? is why the Silent King can't challenge him right now, because he has 120 worlds of Necrons <laughs> at his disposal. How many Necrons you suppose are on a tomb world, give or take? Because obviously every planet's going to vary in size. How uh, many Necrons have, are yeah, in a I, tomb I mean, world? 
like one tumor could be the size of Jupiter, one could be like the size of fucking like Mercury, and it's like okay, there's a, there's a bit of a disparity here. Um, so I was curious, on average, how many no necrons are we looking per tomb world? Nobody knows because nobody ever knows because that's just the way um, GW does oh. numbers. They don't really know, but I would go millions to billions. Ah, ooh. Yeah, I guess However, depending on the size of the planet, you could easily have billions of sleeping Necron on it, yeah. Yeah, especially if they're all locked in, like, lockstep. They're all right next to each other and everything. Yeah. Uh, I'd say millions to billions. I'd go millions just because, uh, maybe, like, tens of millions, just because Necrons tend to be very... Uh, well, a lot of them are damaged during the, the awoken, Awakening. Yeah, so, I was so you're not going to get... Assumption. Yeah, so you're not going to get every Necron on that tomb world to wake up, potentially. You're going to have a lot of <coughs> errors. So. Yeah. Also, yeah, lots of Canoptic stuff, uh, like Scarab Swarms and shit like that. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, so and he's got 100 tomb worlds at 120, his 120. 120 tomb worlds. Damn. Um, though, even it with all of this, he does mm -hmm. know... Even with all the South Tech Dynasty stuff, he does know he cannot fight the galaxy with numbers alone. So for him, he he is a big fan of terror. Uh, oh, because so he's like he's, a Necron Night Lord. Uh, maybe that's why I like him so much. I was going to say, um, that's all of you. Mm -hmm. So the Storm Lord part of him is his actual ability to conjure, like, act, like fuck with the atmosphere and conjure lightning storms. That's legitimately an ability he can do because he's because because Necrons like their tech is so advanced. It's practically magic. Oh, you well, know, yeah, I was about to ask, how the fuck you do that? Well, how does Aura can do the things he does? Like, it's, yeah, I mean, he's literally a time yeah. mage, basically, where he can go back in time and forward and fuck with. Everything yeah, he's he a mage. He, he's a yeah. he's a technologically advanced mage. Yeah, Um, but because of that, often his armies advance on the enemy under the cover of of storm black skies with green lightning bolts arcing out of the clouds to hit their foes. And sometimes enemy armies will enter like, like the mist practically like Stephen King's the mist. And it'll just, <laughs> they'll just disappear into the mist with a bunch of Necrons waiting for them. Oh, that's so and cool. so you just got, so like you've got this big shadowy mist encroaching, firing lightning bolts. And you just see like lines and lines of green eyes in lockstep with each other and then like green lightning bolts powering up through it just through like this mist colored area it, it's fucking creepy that's um, so dope though that's that's the that's the army you want to be a part of hell yeah it is it'd be terrifying imagine that walking towards you oh um, man like that's well i mean if you're fighting other necrons it, however, are you really going to be able to psychologically win a battle with them because you're all robots anyway uh that's very true uh, however, the Necro, uh, he does have one, one real weakness, and that's his pride. Um, he uh -huh. really likes to display his superiority over the other commanders. So often, he will, similar to Xandrek, will actually let go the commanders of the enemy army to, uh, as in the idea is that they get sent back with the, mm -hmm knowledge of failure and the fear of Imatek to spread the fear across their armies and create unrest. Uh, okay. However, the lesson he takes is more of like, I want you to live with your inadequacy. Like you are a failure and you've lost against me. Like go live with that. And he'll normally take like an arm or a leg or a hand. He'll like cool. sever one of their limbs as like a, as like a, 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 a permanent reminder. Uh, yeah, yeah, some kind of physical mutilation. Sure. Um, the problem is that very often the generals will come back and is, instead of sowing fear, will now have a bit of a better idea on how to fight him. I was going to say, that's got to come back and bite you in the butt because now that one soldier can be like, okay, here's what all the Necrons are doing. They let me go. I guess they thought I was going to be like scared and terrified, but nah, this is how you fight them. And they're going to come at you with the storm. Don't walk in the storm. Fight them from... Yeah, that just seems like a bad idea. Yeah, like there's a great quote that Shai beat me to, um, but he says, you have ruled this galaxy for 10,000 of your years, and yet you have so little to account to show for your efforts. Such failure must be as depressing to bear as it is shameful to behold, which he spoke to the chapter master of the Black Templars, 
this guy named High Marshal Helbrecht. Um, he's the he's the model with the little wipey dude wiping his sword. Oh yeah, the, the with the meme, and you wanted someone to. No one ever photoshopped that guy on on your forehead. I thought that was gonna I thought that was gonna bombard you, and it never did. It, it never the did. fuck internet. Um, that in was fact, such an easy slam dunk. Anyway, there's sorry. a really great uh, there's a really great jab. So Helbrecht goes to Imatech and says, "You are a relic of a dead empire that has no right to exist." And Imatech says, "I find that amusing coming from one such as you." <laughs> I mean, like, they're both right. I mean, uh, yeah, a little. They're well, both right. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if Necrons don't have a right to exist, but it is hypocritical as fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oof, oh man, do so they have a long standing? They have, a little, bit of, oh, they have a little bit of a rivalry. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're not necessarily long standing, but there's a bit of a rivalry there. Uh, the thing is, is that yeah, his own little martial hubris is kind of coming back to bite him a little bit. Um, well, because and his is like excessive expansion is also uh, Marnius Calgar, chapter master of the Ultramarines, is taking note of his expansion. Of it's start, and in fact, some nec some Necron activity is starting to get really close to Ultramar. Uh, so you know, of Necron course. supremacy. Whoop whoop. Um, whoop, whoop. Uh, the E and D and Farseers of the Craft World have sensed that their Craft World is under peril, possibly in the future, due to his expansion. Um, oh yeah. In fact, that Imatex armies are as big of a threat to them as the Tyranids. Uh, even Whoa. the Tau Empire have seen the expansion of the Necrons increasing and are starting to get worried themselves. Damn. So uh, he's attracting attention from a lot of people he doesn't want attention from. Yeah, it sounds like he has attracted the attention of literally everyone. You've got Space Marines, you've got Tau, um eldar you got eldar like he's attracting the attention of ev but it, it had to come to that eventually like if you're gonna wake up all of the necrons eventually you're gonna be on everybody's radar you you can't have the biggest army in like the universe without getting a couple blips so it's, it's kind of inevitable i don't know if, do you really think that's like a downside slash weakness it's a weakness if he keeps on getting uh if he does did what hitler did in world war ii and bite off more than he could chew you know, he's like, I'm gonna uh, go fight. Yeah. The, gonna go fight the Russians. Runs all oh. the way in and then loses everything and dies. Yeah, true. If if he decides to go after all of these factions, that's a problem. Uh, but if he's tactical about it and he, you know, he <laughs> he doesn't challenge the Eldar Tau and Ultramarines, he should still be okay. Yeah, right? I mean, well, it depends on if anyone wants to go fight him and, and stop it. True, but chances are, if one of those factions thinks that this big, oh my god, the Necrons are such a threat, it's just going to be them, because the Ultramarines aren't going to go fight with the Tau, the Tau aren't going to go fight with the Eldar, all three of those factions aren't going to join up with each other, so chances are, you're only going to have to deal with one of them. And if Depends. you only have to deal with one of them, then the Stormlord's army should be more than enough to deal with that. Mm, right? Depends. Depends. The the <laughs> the Eldar and the and the Marines might work together. They've worked Ooh, together before. Ooh, that's true. The Eldar and the Marines would work together, right? That's well, how the Gilliman, Black Templars probably wouldn't, but yeah, that's how Gilliman got his waifu. That's true. Yeah. Ah, yeah, they, yeah. You never Good know. Good old Yvrain, Yeah, where they have no real romantic connection to each other, but let's all ship them anyway. Anyway, good old Imatech, our boy. Uh, so he, he's maybe biting off a bit more than he can chew, uh, but it hasn't come to a head yet. yet. So we're curious to see how it turns out. Um, as for him himself, he's got some pretty neat stuff. Um, mm -hmm. He's got his Necrodermis, of course. He's got a phase shifter, which is the ability for him to kind of like, it's like a force field. It kind of stops mm. things from... Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, well, it's not really a force field. Actually, it's more of a defensive device that has some kind of phase in between realities so things might not hit him oh okay. um he's got his gauntlet of fire which is his <laughs> hand thing it's literally just a, a flamethrower in his wrist okay. um, but he also has the staff of the destroyer which oh, is boy. a giant ornamental staff weapon that's like a combination of a staff of light and a war scythe that can fire out blasts of energy but also Damn. stab people and was in fact attempted to be stolen by Trazen the Infinite 
multiple <laughs> times. Of course, of course. He has tried to take it multiple times and has failed. Um, but the coolest thing that he has is something known as Blood Swarm Nano Scarabs. Oh boy, that before knowing what it is, it just sounds like a bunch of uh, uh, nano machines that come out of his like skin and just swarm someone and eat them alive. Nano machines, son. Son, yeah. They are hard <laughs> in response to physical trauma. Um, <laughs> now, Bloodsmore nano scarabs are miniaturized, very mini, mini scarabs that, when are launched out, will go in like a little cloud of flies. And they will probe an enemy's armor for flaws and then begin to feed inside the armor and then breaking oh. down the, the plating, leaving it vulnerable. And then they burrow and dig into the warm flesh underneath the armor. Oh. <laughs> however. It's how, the mummy. <laughs> it's, yeah, except way tinier, like, like ants. Oh, that's um, creepy to think about. <laughs> Because look at the image Shy posted. That's a, a space marine being swarmed by regular scarabs. Oh, I, I've never felt quite. Is, is that a what, what chapter is he from? Uh, uh, blood Red Teardrop, so Blood Angels. Blood Angels. That's what I, I've, I've never felt so sorry for a space marine. That seems like you're going to die and it's going to be horrific. Uh, yeah, it, it's a very painful way to go. Uh, but in They're particular, up to his torso! Holy shit! But, <laughs> but in particular, these ones burrow through the armor like little ants, and then they eat your through your flesh. But what makes uh, it even worse is that the blood that they spill because of these nanoscarabs is incredibly potent and attracts packs of flayed ones. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, a be no. it's a beacon it's a beacon the flayed <sighs> ones that will occasionally come out of whatever horrifying dimension or whatever they're at and oh. like sniff it out like sharks oh no <laughs> it i was like oh yeah it couldn't possibly get any worse than being eaten from the inside out oh boy and then it summons flayed ones. So while you're still getting eaten from the inside out, a flayed one shows up and just starts skinning you and eating you. Well, it summons packs of flayed ones. So oh. in order to go with his uh, his whole like fear mentality, he'll do this, and then he'll have like a guardsman squad just get assaulted by twenty flayed ones and start ripping up the entire battalion. And then they start wearing them as hats, and he's like, "Oh my god, yeah, get, get the fuck out of here." Guys, what happened to Danny? I don't know. That flayed one's wearing him as a coat. Danny mm. literally has a coat. <laughs> yeah. Danny is the coat. Nice coat. Danny, Danny is the coat. Yeah. Nice Danny coat. <laughs> nice Danny coat. <laughs> flayed ones are so. Ugh. Ugh. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Also, why do the Necrons like staff so much? Because like every um, every every name Necron has a. Every name Necron has a staff. Like the Stormlord's got one, Trazen's got one, uh, Orican has one. It's it's literally their weapon. It, 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 Egyptian staves, sign of royalty. Well, yeah, but you you can't use a um. What's the what's the curved blade called? War scythe. No no no. It's like a it's like a it's like a sword, but it's like curved like a half moon. It's um. Oh, oh crap! Okay. I can't think of the name of it. Shy. Scimitar. Uh, no. no, it's like it starts with a K. Um, um uh, Kopesh! That's the one. Warframe has a couple of them, and they suck, and nobody likes them, but everybody thinks they look cool. The Kopesh. The Kopesh. Yeah. Yes, yes. I knew she'd know. She's smart. Uh, okay, well, they... I guess they could, but, but they don't. They use staves because they're royalty. Don't forget, these are like nobles. Yeah, I guess. But, like, you, all of them? Well, no, but the, the, the main people, like, this is, Imatech is an overlord. Um, Orokin is the diviner. He's a high cryptech. Trazen's an overlord. The Silent King is the Silent King. Nemesaur That's... Zandrek is high general and overlord. Vargard Oberyn is a, is a lord. Like... That's... Yeah, I guess, that's remember, I, guess remember. The, I guess the royalty would use, like, pretty hardcore staffs, and they wouldn't use... Yeah, I guess. 
Remember, the named characters of Necrons are almost all royalty because they still have their minds. The ones that don't have their minds don't have character because they're they're like lower warriors Mind's or whatever. Thrones. Yeah. 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 Also, Necrons do done. use scythes. That's true. The uh, what is it? The female executioner in Infinite and the Divine uses a scythe, right? But she's a, not a really the... a high royalty. She's named, but that's different. Well, she's a Triarch Praetorian. They actually have their um, they actually still have their mental state because they protect the king in particular and they serve him right. only. Yeah, um, but it's not like they're royalty where they would need a staff. They could use scythes, and it's not that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, overall, they're definitely more on the staff, like ornamental thing. Necron, mm -hmm. like like overlords use war sites and void sites and things like that. Yeah, uh, but staves are a sign of royalty. They tend to use staves. Yeah, the staff all, all the Necron staffs seem a little overpowered, as they well, should, since they're you know the sign of leadership and royalty. And look at how big and bad I am. Yeah, Necrons in general are overpowered. That's their that's their mm. deal. So fair enough. Yeah. They just need the, They just need to get more of them awake. They just need to, you know, wake them up, sound the alarm mm -hmm. bells, you know. Waking them up, yeah. No, actually, yeah. legitimately, they do need to wake them up. Yeah. Well, I don't really got a whole lot else after that. Um, oh. However, uh, Imatech, his model sucks. It's incredibly old and terrible, and I'm really sad about it. I mean, for um, an old model, it's not that bad. Like, it sure as hell beats out the old guard models that have, like, the melted <laughs> faces, you know? It's not that bad. It's it's, yeah, it's dated for sure. But he's resin, and, and it, th that's, oh, like... Oh, no! <laughs> he's really bad. I don't like him. I don't like him. I hate, I hate resin models. Resin models are, are the devil. Almost every single one of the Necron characters... Besides the Silent King and like the new Zeraz is resin, and it, I hate it. Mm. Oberyn's resin, Xandrek's resin, they're all resin. I don't like it. Orkin's resin, Trazen's resin. So, do you think they're just waiting to make like a Necron? Like, you know how like they had the Hex Firebox and they're about to have uh, Custodians and Jeans? Do you think they're waiting to make like a Necron box that has one of these like new. Uh, nope, they already well, did. It's just GW being GW, and they're not making something that is popular no, no. and heavily wanted. No, they already did it. They made the box in the beginning of ninth. That's what launched with ninth was Marines oh, and Bronze. Right. Oh, but what about just making like a new, uh, a new Trazen, uh, a new Stormlord, or well, a new they... Sandra? Is that just GW being like, hey, we know this is popular and everybody wants it, but here's another batch of Ultramarines. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think maybe they, they've done their quota on Necrons or something because they gave it because they released the Silent King like just recently. And oh, did they? They okay. gave us Illuminor Zeraz, the guy sucking the dude up, and uh, they gave got him really recently oh. as well. That was an upgraded model. Um, well, so I they've mean, been I, they've been fair to the Necrons. They 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 have given us actually quite a few new Necron kits, like okay, like, maybe like like ten or something. Quite a quite a lot actually. Um, <laughs> Eldar fans are like, come on, man! They gave him ten. We haven't had anything in thirty years. Well, they'll get there soon, I'm sure. Uh, we'll see. Fuck the yeah. elves, man! Man, fuck elves. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I obviously I do hope they get their they get their stuff. I yeah, think warp spiders yeah. are really dope, and I want warp spiders to be good again. What are um, warp spiders? Eh, cool little teleporting dudes with cool claw guns, Eldar. They're neat. Cool. I, cool. I mean, I I mean, I want I want I I hate I hate fighting Eldar vehicles, and that's like all that's good right now, and all that's <laughs> decent looking. So just fix their infantry, GW, please. I don't want to do it anymore. If you could have. One mini get revamped and released as a new mini by GW right now. What would it be? Any mini? Any. Like, you could tell them what the next new mini is going to be, and they will insta-make it. What are you telling them to make? Shit. <laughs> it's like such a loaded question. The f you can't put me on the spot like that. There's so many things. You, there is. Um. Uh... <laughs> see listeners i've i've just taught you how to permanently like 
uh, brain freeze Bricky. I don't know. <laughs> See, he's going into overload now. I I don't. Do I uh, do I pick chaos? Got a good refresh. Re you, you know what? Give me give me Trazen. Give me give me Trazen. I'll take Trazen. Okay, I go with that. I will. I, I will. Sure. I will take Trazen. I the the chaos models are are mostly pretty good. Mostly, um, mm -hmm. custodians are recent. Don't need them. There's a lot of guard ones, sure, but guard are like, like they already kind of look. I'm not going to spend my one option on on a tiny character that's barely the size of a guardsman. You know, like I'm not yeah. I'm not going to spend it on that. I I like the idea of Trazen getting a new model because there's so many cool things you could do with him. Like you know how you got the one Necron like sucking someone's soul. Like you could have some really cool shit surrounding like the base of the model or other little doodads they're hanging off him too. So I I think a, I think a new updated Trazen would be <laughs> change my mind. Commissar Yark. Ooh. Commissar Ooh. Yark. Commissar uh, solid uh, extra extra points if I get to his special Bane Blade. Um because this is what Commissar <laughs> Yark looks like right now. And he looks like shit. Yeah, I've I've seen that many. It's it's terrible. He looks like a zombie. He really does. Compare Ooh. that to like Ooh. what he's supposed to look like, and it's just oh my god. It's bad. All right. It's real bad. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm into this episode. Uh, I choose that one. Leave us in the comments what you'd like to see get revamped because that'd be dope. Yeah. Uh, my name has been Bricky. Thanks for watching this episode. DK, where can they find you? DK Diamantes in all the places. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, just search DK Diamantes. You'll find me. Yeah, you can find quite shy in places as well. And quite shy places and we're doing a stream once a week every weekend stop hey. by or check out the youtube ring the bell whatever you gotta do in order to make sure you see it all right i'll see we should you probably later set up a specific time for those so we can tell people to just be there at like 10 a.m all right i'll see you later <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>